today you join me on the lovely Middle Severn. One of my favourite places to be on earth, especially in the autumn. And today we're going to talk about fishing for perch with shads. Now shad law, uh, traditionally, is a law with a, with a paddle tail that looks just like a fish. In, the, uh, in Scandinavia and lots of parts of the world, the predominant bait fish is called a shad. And it looks a lot like a small roach or a minnow or like any bait fish that we've got in our waters. So as you can imagine, they're a very important part of a lure angler's armoury. There's lots of different ways to fish with them. And today, we're going to begin... That's a snag. <laughs> there you go. There's lots of different ways to fish with the shad. And one of my favourites is the technique I'm using now, where I just lift the rod a couple of times, let it fall, and yep, we're... Ooh, he let go of it. The fish there has taken the bait on the drop, caught me off guard to be honest. I think the fish are um, up in the water a little bit, so it's a good time. We've had one already. This is just the, th the third cast. It looks like we've got a few fish about, so let's get fishing again and see if we can't convert the next one. Oh, he hit that hard. The great thing about perch fishing is where there's one, there's usually more. The big ones will be in a shoal with all their mates. And if you can find a nice average size of fish, my advice is keep fishing for them whilst they're still there because these fish that we found today, within a few weeks, they'll have moved on. The river may have changed, the river may have come up, the level may have changed, and it will completely change the whole picture of the river and put these fish in a different position. So here we go. When we can find them like this, it's best to make hay while the sun shines. That was a good fish, this. Now you can see I'm using quite a short rod here, which um, brings with it its own traumas. But a nice long landing net handle should get me out of trouble here. Uh, there we go. Had to net him over the top of the reeds, it's not ideal. I think I might have to move positions for the next one. That's a belter. There you go, I reckon there's a lot of fish in this bracket about today. Caught him on a new kind of shad that we'll be releasing next year that's based on the core and ready shads, which we'll also be fishing with today. An absolute river beauty. really important to remember with shads when you're fishing with lures for perch is the retrieve style it's very different than when you're fishing for pike with pike you can get away with almost a straight retrieve hold the rod in one position giving it the odd jerk and that will work for for perch but it's much better to have the bait rising and falling in the water these lures are designed to kick the tail hard as they fall through the water so the more you can pronounce that the more chance you've got of drawing the fish's attention now the, the ready shad is, has been designed in such a way to make it very easy to fish with. So whether you're fishing it fast or slow, I'm fishing this quite fast today. You can almost feel that tail kicking as the bait falls through the water. And that's what draws the attention of the fish. Even when it's coloured, you'll still find you're getting bites, positive takes on shads. Well, it just made a quick change of lure. Um, 
I was fishing sort of Texas rig style earlier and I had a feeling that fishing a straight jig might be a, a better course of action and I, I was right because on the second cast we've got a nice perch Oh, he's an old battle scarred warrior. He's had a run in with a pike, I think. Just goes to show you might think you're the apex predator, but you're not. Well, there's a nice handful. 15 minutes in the right place. Three fish on the Corum Shads. One on a Texas rig, the other two straight jigging. They were absolutely nailing the lures on the drop. We're gonna move on to another spot now and see if we can't find some just like these. Shads for lure fishing are going to play a massive part in your armoury and something to pay close attention to is the tail. Now this is one of the Corum drop shot minnows which as the name suggests it's absolutely awesome for drop shot fishing but it's also good for jigging. You'll see the tail is quite small and this part's quite long so this tail is really fast just like a small bait fish it really rattles just like that when you're fishing with it. So this can be really good even in very coloured water. When you sort of move up to a, a Corum Ready Shad, again you'll see the profile of the tail is a little bigger, the wrist of the tail is a little thicker, so you get a bit more side to side movement. And as you go up through the sizes, that side to side gets slower and slower. There are lots of other shads on the market that are well worth investigation. This is a, a Quantum one from our sort of sister, sister company, a great lure with a really big tail. So when the river's very coloured, I'll turn to something like that to make more vibration in the water. And rigging them couldn't be easier. We actually sell these pre-rigged, so it, it doesn't get any easier than that, but it's simply a case, take your, your favourite jig head, pop it on, just like that, and you're fishing. It doesn't really get any simpler than that, and I can urge you, rather than buying millions and millions of different shads, find one that you like, that you've caught a few fish on, you're confident with, and then buy some more. Buy different colours and try them on different days with different retrieves. It's much better than spending hundreds and hundreds of pounds buying every lure that swims because find one that works and trust me, it'll keep working forever. Looking for the right kind of spots for lure fishing on the river for perch. For me, it's all about finding areas of calm, relatively slack water and the deeper the better. That will enable you to fish with quite light jig heads so you can use like I am here a three gram no problem five gram normally if, you, if you're going up to seven gram then the river's probably moving too much. In my experience and I've fished with some very talented anglers who caught some real big fish from the river we catch most of the fish from very slack water it's almost like a lake. So this uh, swim here you'll see We've got a, a few trees that sort of stick out into the river and it's created this big slack area. So I can cast a three gram jig out into this sort of upstream area and I can bring it back and the flow of the river isn't actually going to move it too much. So they're the best kind of spots if you go and search in, make some casts with a lure, bring it back and if it's coming back in a nice straight line with a five gram jig head on or something like that, you're probably in the right place. Well, I just changed to a different coloured lure 
I saw a big splash in the swim and I thought it might have been a pike, but I reckon it's a few fish like this. A much better stamp of fish than the ones earlier. A real nice chunky one, got a bit of depth to him. And as you can see, he absolutely nailed that crayfish lure. Absolutely brilliant. We're supposed to be catching them on shads, but who cares?